Hello, welcome back to the studio. Well, you asked me to paint a waterfall for you, and that's what I've done. Now, I used the background from another Bob Ross classic, Woodgrain View, but changed the central theme. And that's what you can do for your own paintings. Now, the other thing I want you to concentrate on with this particular tutorial is a sense of balance between lights and darks, highlights and shadows. I got it a little bit wrong a couple of times and I corrected it as I went along. Yes, I mixed a little mud as well, but that's all part of the fun of painting. So let's get on with the waterfall. So here's my canvas, 16 inches by 20, and I've painted it with black gesso and left it to dry completely before marking an outline using this. It's just a white pencil. I'm going to be doing a special wood grain effect on this canvas. And to get the process started, I'm going to use some Bob Ross Liquid Clear Oil Paint. I use a small amount applied with an old Bob Ross landscape brush. I'm just going to apply it though to the outside edge and just overlap into the central area. Today, I'm going to be doing a wood grain effect. So I need just a thin amount of this Liquid Clear applied. The colors I'm going to be using are some Prussian blue and some dark sienna with a touch of titanium white. I'm going to use that same old one inch brush. I dry cleaned it a little bit and scrub in a generous amount of the Prussian blue. This wood grain effect is a fun way of creating a special effect using oil paint. It relies upon the fact that liquid clear and thinners don't like each other and a thin even coat of color, then some thinners applied to it can create a nice sort of crackle finish just like wood grain. But make sure you've got enough blue colour. See on my hand, I want it slightly stronger, not weaker. As you see, a nice strong blue colour around the entire border of my painting. I've put a small amount of odorless thinners into a dish and I've got an old fan brush ready. I just want to damp the fan brush, but not too wet. And I'm going to go straight into some titanium white. I want a sort of nice sort of thin runny mixture of this. I'm going to use this with a little bit of Prussian blue and a little bit of dark sienna, which makes sort of a greenish tint. Just work it through the bristles, but again, make sure this is a nice runny mixture. And I'm going to just drag the brush down the canvas, wiggle and jiggle as it goes, and then wait for the reaction. Now I have to say that I've done this sort of painting style quite a lot in the past and had some really violent reactions and the, and the paint really has split and cracked quite dramatically. Now, just to clarify, we're not talking about an explosion. Your canvas isn't gonna catch fire. We're talking about a chemical reaction, a bit like oil and water not liking to mix. It's the same thing with thinners and liquid clear. They just don't like each other and tend to pull apart, creating rather a lovely wood grain effect. I'm gonna leave my canvas to dry for at least a week before I attempt to paint on it. And here is my canvas a week later. As you can see, this wood grain effect has dried completely and I've remasked the area in the center for a painting. Once again, I'm going to use some Bob Ross liquid clear oil paint for the central area of my painting. And once again, very thinly applied. I'm gonna go right up to, but not under the tape and around the edges. So brush in from the edge to the center. This week, I'm gonna be painting a waterfall and I've taken this picture from Pixabay as a reference. I'm not sure about putting the sun rays through here, but I definitely like some of these colors. and I love this waterfall shape and the background. So I'll be taking elements for my painting. To start the painting, I've got some alizarin crimson and some thalo blue. I want to make a soft lavender color. About five parts of crimson, one part thalo blue and mix them very well. Do you see, you have to keep adding little bits of blue until you get just the right tone of lavender. I think I'm about right. I'm gonna start off by using a fan brush and just a touch of the lavender color on a sort of soft pastel sky shade, maybe a touch of blue as well. There isn't much sky in my painting. I just want something soft and pastel. I want to think about just the very, very top part of my painting being the sky. I 
think I'll just drop in a bit of a layout line here so I don't sink too far down on the canvas. As you see in the reference photograph, this sky really isn't a big feature. I just want a suggestion of color. I stood back and it looks a little bit too sort of pale and white. So I've touched it up with a little bit more phthalo blue and a little more lavender. I'll soften it all together. I think that's about right. I want to use this fan brush again. I'll give it a quick dry clean on a paper towel. Some of the background foliage is a lovely bright orange color. And I've put out some Indian yellow and some bright red on my palette with some yellow ochre. Now I hold my fan brush sort of parallel to the canvas and use just the corner of the brush with a bit of a flick. It creates a lovely sort of textured effect, sort of distant foliage, but nothing too specific, nothing too detailed. This is a lovely way of creating that broken foliage effect we see in the reference photograph in the background. With a little practice, you can create some really beautiful undergrowth. Use different values of oranges, yellows, and later on a little bit of green as well. Once again, this is just background detail for my waterfall. As the painting progresses, I'll be adding more detail to this background and changing the value as well. I might come back to that fan brush and use it later on. So I'm going to use a second fan brush to add some nice green and gold tones. I got some sap green, a little cad yellow and some Indian yellow. Again, I'll just loosely brush mix these. Once again, I'll use just the corner of the fan brush with a bit of a light flick. Now, just a word, if you get green and the orange mixed together, they make a sort of, sort of brownish tone. So take care if you don't want that in your painting. I want to make a nice shadow green color. I've taken some black into my mixture. Here you see, I just want to get the subtle sort of hint of a bit of foliage, but it's deep into the wood here and I don't really want it to sort of be too bright. Any of the yellow colors I've put on, if they're too bright, I can always tone them down a bit. You can see how the orange and green color get together, and make a funny sort of brown tone. Once again, it's not a bad colour, but you just might not want it sometimes in your painting. I'm going to leave a nice gap through here for the waterfall. But I'm going to make sure I let these dark green colours progress down the sides of my painting. So these are the other brushes I'll be using in my painting today. A liner brush, a filbert, and a couple of these flat synthetic brushes from Royal and Langnickel. They sent me some to try, so we'll see how we get on with them. I've got one of the small flat brushes and I'm going straight into some black. I want to drop in the suggestion of some background trees. I'll just use the brush on edge. And notice I sort of do a sort of stuttering sort of stroke here. I don't do one stroke all the time. I like this sort of broken effect. It can make a tree look more sort of characterful. If you do one thick heavy stroke, well, then you will just get one thick heavy trunk. But here I do sort of little touches and taps. It gives me a nice sort of broken effect. When I want a big strong tree, I'll do one single stroke. I think I want to move a tree. And as Bob would say, when you pick up a brush, you have infinite power. I'll drag this one through from the background to the midground. Let's paint a waterfall. I've tied up my palette and I'm going to take two colors, dark sienna and some phthalo blue. I'm going to just lay them down side by side and then use my pattern knife to sort of roughly mix them in the center. Memorize this color combination. It's probably going to be one of the most useful colors you could ever have. They make a lovely warm gray tone. As you see, I'll add a little bit of white to the side of it. I blend them together and this is the color I'm going to get. I'm going to use this to underpaint my waterfall. I want to start off by just thinking about where the top of the fall will be and then just use, again, that sort of stuttering stroke, just touches and taps here and there and mapping out the position of the waterfall. I don't want to commit too soon in case I want to change my mind. 
should be much easier just to wipe off paint that I don't need at this stage and add a little more. I'll even try and get my little finger out of the way for a change. One of the other things I'm trying to do is to decide where I want to position some rocks. So in your mind's eye, as you paint these little sort of trails of water, leave some little dark holes here and there. It doesn't take long before you overfill everything and here I've left a lot of dark. So I have lots of nice choices when it comes to adding the rocks in. I've changed to a Bob Ross Filbert brush and gone into some Van Dyke Brown. Here you see, I'm just mapping out the position of the first rock and that nice little hole and just down to the right of it, another rock. If I paint over that lovely gray color, it just gets absorbed. I want to darken them just a little more, so I've put some black into my mixture. I want them to be just a little more shadowy. Again, notice how I hold the brush more like a stick. I just use the side of the brush and just drag the paint down the canvas. This creates a lovely texture. It'll be so much easier to add some highlights to. I've dry cleaned my filbert on a paper towel and I'm going to make a marble mix of Van Dyke Brown, some yellow ochre, some dark sienna and a touch of this grubby white colour. Don't overmix these, we want a lovely broken colour on our brush. If you overmix them it turns into sort of a flat caramel colour. Now hold the brush with a very light touch, just finger and thumb and let the brush bump across the rock. The sticky Van Dyke Brown black mixture will take off the highlight it wants and give you back the bit it doesn't need. This is just, again, the first layer of detail on these rocks and waterfall. I know from experience if I try adding too much detail it will get a bit muddy and well, I've mixed a bit of mud in my time. In fact, I might well be becoming a mud mixer any moment. I'm just going to try putting a few little bits of maybe moss and lichen on these rocks. I've added a touch more cadmium yellow to my mixture to make it a little bit thinner and oilier. This seems to stick a little easier. Once again, take care. It's so easy just to mix that mud. We'll see in a minute what happens when I try painting more detail on my painting. Having established the position of the rocks in the waterfall, I can add some more highlight. Once again, I go back into my grey tone mixture and add a touch more white to it. I want to just brighten things up slightly, but it's all a matter of balance. As I said in the introduction, we don't really want to go too bright too soon. I use these little touches of highlight here and there to indicate moving water. I add a little here and a little there. I take regular standbacks from my painting to see how it's progressing, where the highlights might be and where I want to keep some of the shadow tones. I use these little wiggling strokes to indicate moving water. It's an interesting technique and one that you should try. You can get some fantastic results. So as you see, my painting's going on rather nicely. And I'm starting to get that lovely sort of sense of movement of water over the rocks. But there's a problem. And you might have spotted that the top half of my painting is just a little over bright. And this is something you have to work out when you're doing your own paintings. When you stand back from them, are you looking at the waterfall, which is the main feature? Or is your eye being taken to the top of the painting, which is a little over bright? I need to balance things out a little bit more with this painting. I need to introduce some darkness here because unlike a Bob Ross traditional sort of painting where he would underpaint all of that area with a lovely dark strong colour first, I went straight on highlight on highlight. And as you see, what it does is it tends to make things a little bit sort of overexposed. It'd be like turning up the, the meter on the old camera too much and, and taking in those sort of one of those really bright shots where great aunt Maud's face looks sort of white. And this is the problem I've got here is that my, my painting is just too bright. So I'm going to spend about half an hour just sort of toning things down there a little bit, adding a few nice sort of darker sort of brown tones into it, maybe even a few burgundy tones. I can't do any more on my waterfall today because this is 
too wet and sticky. And this needs about another three or four layers of highlighting, slowly building things up. So I'll do that little bit of color changing at the top of my painting, and I'll come back and play with this again tomorrow. I'm going to use my orange fan brush with a little bit of black and some alizarin crimson. I want to make a sort of deep burgundy color, a warm, dark red tone. Here and there, I'm gonna punch this color into my overly bright highlights. It's a bit like painting the Bob Ross method back to front. I put the highlights on first and then add some shadow afterwards. This way I can still leave some of the really bright highlights alone. But I'll add some darker green tones as well, just to calm things down. I stand back regularly from my painting, look at it from the other side of the studio. As you see, I just knock that highlight right back. Just left a few little touches here and there. And suddenly my waterfall becomes centre stage again. So here's my painting the following day. And the liquid clear is just tacky. Not too sticky, and but not completely dry. But I think I can add more detail and colour on top now. But the choice is do I add more liquid clear or just go with it as it is? Well, for my preference, I think I'm just going to go with the painting as it is, just slightly tacky. I'm also going to be using this, my homemade marl stick. I want to indicate where I want maybe a pool at the base of the canvas and I want to get it fairly level. So I'll use this to measure and mark a straight line. I'm using a filbert brush with a little bit of grubby white and a touch of phthalo blue on it. Just want to scratch it where I think the line will be. I'll use the handle of the brush to do some measuring. Notice I use my finger sort of like a stop block and I measure up from the base of the canvas. As you can see, I'm a little bit low on the right. Yes, I definitely need to lift that end up or else I'm gonna have sloping water. That won't do. So, quick readjustment. I think I'm about there. Now I've gone back into some of the lavender blue colors with a touch of the black and the Van Dyke brown to make a sort of a nice grayish tone. I want to add in some water down here, but I don't want it to be too bright. Just scrub this color in, letting some of the black gesso come through and some of the wood grain effect. It's nice and textured. I'll also straighten up my line again. I think I got it a little bit wonky. I'll also be using the corner of a fan brush, with that same tapping technique, just to scrub in some detail at the sides of the waterfall. I think I'll also add some nice big rocks at the base of the falls. I'll just paint these over the edge of the foliage and let them extend down below that water line. Once again, I want to use a nice marble mix of colors. White, yellow ochre, some Van Dyke brown, dark sienna. Once again, that same feather-like touch. Just fingers and thumbs and let the brush bounce across the surface of the Van Dyke brown and black for the rocks. It's a repeat performance of the way I put the rocks into the waterfall. You see, I've added more rocks to the right as well. Maybe a few pebbles and stones just to add to the whole effect. I've decided to add some sap green and black to the water areas. I think this blue color looks a little bit sort of too sort of flat and cold. So I'll put some green into here and let some of the blue areas peek through in between. Once again, don't worry about doing solid blocks of color. Just leave some patches of dark green and some blue here and there. Once again, I've gone back into my blue-gray mixture that I did the waterfall with. I want to put in the suggestion of some water here, some nice ripples and some splashes. Circle the outline of the rocks. It gives them a little bit of depth, but my canvas is starting to feel sticky. I'm starting to mix some mud. I 
I want to add a third layer of detail to the waterfall. And I switch to a liner brush and a very much brighter color now. Think about how the light would come from this right hand side and just catch the edge of the waterfall. But whew, wow, that looks a little bit too bright, doesn't it? See how that really jumps off the canvas. I think I'll just smudge that out with my finger and tone my color down a little more. Once again, we're looking for a nice sense of balance in our painting. Raise the accent of some areas, brighten it up, and let some areas remain in the shadows. I'll use some of those little wiggly strokes just to indicate some moving water. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget, like and subscribe. Give that little thumb icon a click as well. It means that every time you do that, YouTube know that my tutorial is doing something fun and exciting for you. I'll share it to lots of other people and my little channel will grow. If you want to do a little more, you can even add a small donation to my coffee cup. It helps support the channel by buying more paint and supplies for the next tutorial. Thank you. Here's an interesting technique to add detail to a painting with a sort of more random approach. I've loaded my little liner brush with some paint and I'm laying the brush on its side and just letting the brush sort of flick. It gives you a very random effect of paint. You really just want the paint just to sort of land where it lands. So all this little detail on the edge here, which looks like water splashing over the top of the waterfall, is happening sort of by random, by almost accident. The canvas is fairly textured from the previous layers of paint. Same down here. So as I touch the canvas, just run my brush on its side, it leaves sort of random dots of color. It gives an almost perfect representation of moving water splashing over the rocks. So here's my painting after the second day. And as you see, I darkened down the top of the painting and added more detail to the waterfall, which suddenly brings it forward in the painting. So I think I've got quite a good balance going, but I can't help feeling maybe that one or two of these rocks here may also need a bit of a lift in terms of color. The process of balancing your paintings, adding and taking away lights and darks is something you should be doing continuously as you paint. Do a little, stand back. See where your eyes fall. See where you may want to make a little improvement in terms of color and brightness. Something artists call chroma, that real sort of intensity of color. These little details that you pick out in your painting will help your work improve immensely. I think it's time though, I got rid of this awful tape. It's really quite a distraction. I think once I've done that, a few more rocks and maybe a little bit more splash and crash to finish my painting. So. Let's continue. So it's time for a mini reveal. Off with the masking tape. And time to have some fun. I got my filbert brush, some sap green and cat yellow. Load it by stabbing the brush into the paint. And let's see if we can add some detail to our painting. And letting the trees, bushes and rocks burst out through the edge of the masking tape. This really gives our painting a lovely 3D effect. It's funny how when the masking tape was there, we felt somehow quite safe with our painting, but now it's gone. Well, it's really a bravery test, isn't it? But just enjoy the process. Just enjoy painting outside the box, so to speak. I'll do all the same techniques that I've done previously. So we have plenty of practice at this, adding highlights and shadows, rebalancing our painting, standing back and adding more detail. I'm always careful to look at the various heights and positions of rocks and bushes in my painting so that they don't all line up across the canvas. Some little high ones and some little low ones. Again, it's all a matter of balance. You want your painting to draw the eye in 
to the waterfall. This takes practice, and you'll see that I make changes all the time, but I can't help feeling that there's something else needed for my painting. So the question is, what would you do if this was your painting? One area that could do with a little bit of an extra burst of colour is back here, the base of the falls. I need a little bit more splash and crash behind those rocks. But I can't help feeling that the foreground rocks look, well, a bit sort of uninspiring, sort of a bit miserable looking. No, I need to add a little burst of colour, a sort of counterpoint to the waterfall. I think I'm close to the area I need to add that little bit of extra detail. In fact, I think this rock is an ideal candidate for a burst of highlight. I've mixed up a nice bright highlighting colour and added some lovely ripples of water going towards it. This direction. So my eye is being led firstly to the rock on the left and then from there to the background. And here's my finished painting. Waterfall on wood grain inspired by a Bob Ross classic. So there you have it. Wood grain view converted to wood grain waterfall, of course. But don't move, there's another lovely video for you to watch coming right along. Happy painting, people.